Hi guys, Ryu here with another Toot for Blender hard surface modeling with add-ons. Today I'm gonna start a series on box cutter, hopefully gonna move to hard ops later on, but first box cutter. It's a bit more simple and I think very useful add-on because it allows you to perform very quick booleans. So first, how do we get box cutter installed? You can go to Gumroad or Blender Market or similar websites and get box cutter as a standalone add-on, but you can also get it in bundle with hard ops. So if you don't have hard ops yet, I suggest you get both. They work very well together. The sort of one add-on split into two programs. There are many functions in hard ops that um, sort of spill over box cutter, and I will show you this later in this series. So I suggest you get both. But anyway, get the box cutter. I go to preferences click on install, install the, um, the add-on from a zip file, then you will see a box cutter add-on in your list, check mark it, save preferences, and you're done. Now, once you install the box cutter and it's correctly installed, you should see the icon of box cutter in here. To access that, you press Alt W on your keyboard, and if you have hard ops installed as well, you can switch between the two add-ons by simply pressing Alt W. W will get you out of the hard ops box cutter zone, right? Well, let's talk about menus. You can see the top bar has nothing if I'm not in the box cutter menu. If I jump into box cutter, I got a new bar. Now that bar is very important, although you can access these options through different menus. But let me show you what this bar offers you, okay? First of all, you have different types of booleans. Then you have different types of shapes. You can also access these shapes in here. So circle, square, and gone custom. Then you got stuff like uh, alignment of the view. So you align the view, the cutters to your view, or align the cutters to your object or to the world. So the, the world axis orientation, right? Then you have grids, about which I'll talk about in a different video. Then you have all these options in here, which can make your head spin, but don't worry, we're gonna cover that as well. Just not in this vid. So that's one way of accessing menu. Second way of accessing menu is by going to end panel. So you can either uh, press these, uh, this tiny arrow here, or just simply tap N on your keyboard and go to box cutter and you can see you get the same menu, right? Then you can go to D. So if you're in box cutter mode, if you press D, you're gonna see this menu popping out and you have the same options on top of it. You got the pie menu, which allows you to quickly switch between different types of cuts. So it can be a box cut, circle cut, yeah, custom cut and gun cut, right? And you also have access to all the options. Then you have Control D menu, which is um, a bit more concise, but again, kind of simple to this one here, right? In fact, I think it's identical. So it's kind of like a quick um, a Control D. It's like a kind of quick sort of um, pop-up menu to adjust certain functions. Shift V will allow you to access View menu. So instead of going to D and then to view, right, you can just simply click on Shift V. There is one more menu, but to show you that I'll need to actually start box cutting. So let's let's create a cube because that's what we do with box cutter. We destroy cubes. And how do you actually use box cutter? So by default, if your box cutter is running, which means, you know, you pressed RW, you got into box cutter. If you select an object, right, you click on any of the faces. Let's go to box, maybe. You click on any of the faces. You drag your mouse to create a shape that you want, right? You release the mouse when you're happy with it. You drag your mouse again to confirm the depth. You click, and there's your cut. The cut is not applied, which means... If I'm going to go to edit mode, you can see that the geometry was not really cut, which means 
if I go to boolean, uh, if I go to mod modifier stack, you can see I have a boolean modifier going on. It's running, it's live. So I can still adjust it. Okay, let's go back. Now, when I'm performing the cut, look at the bottom of my screen here. You see, you can see all the shortcut keys that you can use for that particular operation, which is again a lot, and I'll be talking about it in a different video, but just showing you that you can perform a lot of different functions while you're cutting, while you're live, okay? Now, if you press X on the keyboard, you will switch to slice. And by the way, you can see that I can move, rotate my screen around with my middle mouse button. I can move it with control. I can move it with shift. So I can, while my cutter is being live, I can adjust my view to see if I'm cutting correctly, which is very useful when you want to perform some precision cuts. So anyway, if I press X, I'm going to switch to slice. If I press X again, I'm going to switch to inset. If I keep pressing X, I will cycle between the booleans. These are the most common booleans. So, slice, uh, cut, slice, and inset. Okay. Then, if I'm going to press K, I'm going to switch to knife. And the knife tool, if I apply it, it's actually permanent, which means once you apply the knife, it's baked into a geometry. So, be mindful of that, right? Let's go back. Another thing that you can do with a cut with a box cutter is perform unions. So if you press J and then E, you can actually extrude the shape from your original shape and just add a union boolean. If you press A and E to extrude, you will create a separate a separate object. Now all these objects are going to move together if you select the main object and the reason for it is because box cutter is creating parent uh, relations between the cutters which are children and the main object with the parent. You can see the parent line between this object created here and the main object. So even if I cut this box right, and I recall the cutter by pressing um, uh, control H. You can see that if I move the box, the cutter will move with it. Let's remove this one so it's not confusing. The cutter will move with it. If I resize it, the cutter will resize with it. And the cutter is still live. So that's the power of box cutter. Right. In addition, you can see here on the right side that box cutter has created a separate collection for cutters so you can always recall them really easily if you are using so let's say i hide it if you are using hard ups as well and you you can access hard ups um by switching to hard ups right but you can access hard ups also when you're in box cutter mode by simply pressing q and then if i'm gonna go to uh, mod scroll toggle if i click on that i can scroll between my modifiers and I can click on the one I want to recall and I can, you know, play with it. I can reshape it, resize it, do whatever I want, right? So that's very powerful stuff, okay? So that's different cutters. Now, let's talk about shapes, okay? The basic shape is a box, but you can also switch it to circle. You can switch it to Engon. So, how do I draw Engons? If I start drawing an Engon, you can see that it can go in any direction. However, if I press Control and hold it, it's going to start snapping in the increments. So, I can use this to create a shape I want. Double click and extrude. So, again, you select the shape, you press and hold Control. You start drawing angles, click, 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 double click to confirm the shape and move your mouse. You can do all kinds of stuff with angles, circles, squares, doesn't matter, boxes. So you can shift this angle to, for example, a cutter. So if I double click to confirm, 
and extrude, I press X, I can switch to different types of bullions. So union, etc. Right? Even knife. And you can see my cut was performed inside of the mesh. Okay, let's delete that and cut another cube. Now let's talk about views. By default, the view is set to object. What does it mean? It means that if you have object selected, if you draw from a face, depending on which face you're drawing from, the box cutter will um, align to its rotation. So even if you have a face that it's slanted, right? Box cutter will align to it automatically. So you don't have to fiddle with, you know, aligning your cutters manually, just all automatic, which is great. Now, to cut from view, you will need to switch by pressing Shift V and go to view or going to uh, D menu and switch it in here. Now, if you're in a view and you draw a shape, you can see that the cutter now is aligning to the view. You can do it in orthographic or perspective, it doesn't matter. However, if you're in object view, right, and if you're cutting a mesh, but then you want to cut from the perspective view, let's say from this side, box cutter will automatically understand that you're working in a perspective mode in a side view and would align automatically to a view mode which is fantastic because before we actually have to switch between the views now I don't really have to think about it there is also a, another option in here um, here this one align to view which is a smart view align but again I'll, I'll talk about it later another video so what's the world axis about well the world view which is here if you have nothing selected, box cutter automatically will align any shape that you create to to an axis. So to the world axis. So um, let's go to world view and see what's happening. It's a Y axis selected, which means box cutter created an object on that axis. If we switch to Z, um, it's gonna go that way, and X is gonna go this way. And then you can change the shape, I mean, you can create different shapes with it. You can create um, custom shapes, which I'll talk about custom cutters in the next video. You can create um, end guns as well. So it's working all in the same fashion. So th these are view aligns, which are quite important. There is one more thing I want to mention is a type of cuts that come with default settings in box cutter. So if I drag the shape release and manually draw the depth, it will, well, cut to a depth I defined. However, if I draw a shape and just quick, quickly click once, it will perform a laser cut, which is a cut through the mesh. And if I'm going to go to uh, recall this latest boolean, you can see in perspective mode, this boolean is slightly larger than the main mesh which ensures clean cut through the mesh, so there is no Z fighting or any other issues. So if you want to perform really quick cuts like that, you just simply draw and click, draw and click, and it will work in any mode, in any shape. And drawing and dragging, you can define with a mouse before confirming the depth of your cut. So that should cover basics of box cutter. The next video is going to be a bit more in-depth. I'm going to talk about cutters and how you can modify them, rotate them, align them, etc. I'm going to, going to talk more about those settings in here. Not all of them, but some of them. And we're going to go more into the nitty-gritty of box cutter and some really cool stuff that you can do with this add-on. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next video.